What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to bring you my review of South Park Snow Day, a game that we've talked so much about leading into release. I was really excited for the game, and I'm here to maybe disappoint, but at the same time, say it's not the worst game I've ever played. It's not terrible. I've seen, I haven't looked at any specific reviews themselves, but I did see the Metacritic score being around like a 60. I saw IGN gave the game a 3. That was actually quite shocking. I would not say, and I don't do scores but I would not say I think of it you know like a three or a four okay but this is a fine game it's a really really short game and we're gonna go over the positives the negatives and based off what I'm saying maybe you'll like it maybe you won't like it um I do want to start off by thanking them they gave me a code early I got to play it and I didn't rush it I went through you know at a, at a fine pace and let's start with that length because you know we just made a video a few days ago where we talked about this this guy, right, who was able to sit down and play through the entire game, and he talked about how it took him, right, like six, seven hours, maybe that's around the length of this game. This game took me four and a half hours to go through. There are five chapters, and... I would say they're each about an hour, but you know what? Honestly, they're not. Number one, that average wouldn't actually work. And number two, I think I died slash quit the mission purposely to see like what would happen to the mission. I did that a few times. So each mission is not an hour. I would say it's somewhere around the 30, 35, 40 mark. Um, there's, you know, you can go down like small little, not hallways, but you, you can look around, right? There's opportunity to get toilet paper here and there, and you're going to want to do that right throughout your run. So so you can extend it, and obviously replayability is a big part of this game. We're going to talk about that as this video goes. But if you're saying, all right, from start to finish, right, you boot the thing up, how long does it take with cutscenes? With cutscenes, it takes four and a half hours, uh, at least at my pace. And I played the entire thing on normal, not on hard. It actually is kind of difficult, so normal, I think, was a fine difficulty for me. And like I said, I think I died maybe two times, which ends the mission. So you'd have to restart the mission entirely right so okay let's talk a little bit more about the game itself so you go up and you pick each individual mission and each individual mission is going to be something slightly different it's going to be a new location it might be new enemy types um, especially as you kind of get further on I think the enemies actually kind of pick up in a cool way uh, there'll be a different end boss of course right each mission basically ends with a end boss all right and you go through and it's pretty much I mean look it is a roguelike game is it a good roguelike game I would honestly say no and I'll explain in a second but you go through segments, okay? You pick a level, you go through, you, you do something. It's an objective. You either fight or you collect or you do something like that. You go through a gate, you pick a card, and then you move on to the next phase of each mission, okay? And they're generally broken into like four or five phases. So you pick mission two, let's say, you know, mission two. You go through five or different stages, the fifth one being the end boss, and then you're done. How is it a roguelike? Well, in the beginning, you pick your loadout, right? So you have like a hand-to-hand -hand weapon, and you also have a ranged weapon. Now, an immediate issue is, I would say, the diversity of them. To me, it actually felt like some of them were just flat-out better, better weapons than others. And why you would say, well, why is that an issue? Well you're supposed to play it with other people. I mean, if you don't, you have bots, and the bots actually are pretty smart in this game, okay? I gotta give it to them. But if you're playing with other people, you can mix with your loadout, right? You wanna have maybe somebody else's loadout be different than yours. Well, when it comes to, like, your actual hand-to-hand -hand fighting you might actually just settle into something that you think is subjectively better than something else. Now, there's powers. You get two powers for each person, and this is where I can see things being mixed up. I think there's eight of them in all, and it actually is kind of a struggle to pick and figure out, okay, well, I... I always did healing, right? So I always brought in like a tower that would heal me. And that was necessary because the bots really didn't help me in that department. So I would bring that in and then I would bring like an offensive weapon or ability into each match. I can see if you're playing with other people that actually being pretty cool because you can mix and match and maybe I go all healing, you go all like aggressive and we work together in the mission. So I do think there's kind of room there. Absolutely. Okay. So what else makes it roguelike? I would say maybe two other other elements to it. Number one, the objectives do change depending on how many times you go through. So I noticed this immediately. I think I died maybe in like mission two originally. I didn't die at all in mission one. And then when I went back in, I saw, oh, you know, like some of the objectives are the same. There's some kind of mission specific things you do and the environment's the same and the objective's the same. But there are a couple, say if there's five, you know, areas per mission, 
two or three seem to be in rotation, where if you die or you quit and you restart the level, those will change. It'll be a different environment. Maybe same enemies, but different environment, and you'll just go through it. So that's what I would say. You know, again, is it a good roguelike? Like, it's trying. I just I feel like it's just on a, such a smaller scale. But at the same time, we've seen games on a small scale, like Hades. Hades is a very small scale developer, and that game is one of the best roguelike games I think ever created. This, this is not, right? Again, the weapons leave a lot to be desired. The rotation, yeah, it does does like it gives you new things but ultimately you will be doing the same things in each of them and then the only other thing i would say roguelike about it you have a thing called dark matter right there's three currencies there's toilet paper and toilet paper is once you get to a card right you can pick cards throughout your run and you can upgrade those cards for a cost and those are through toilet paper okay so that's one thing you go through and i actually like that again not enough variety so that's the pro con there's not enough cards and there's not enough kind of variation but they are kind of cool and there is reason to almost grind a area, find as much toilet paper as possible, and then try to build the best deck as you're going through a level. But here's the thing. It restarts at the end of that level. So once you're done with it, you're done. You also do not bring toilet paper into a mission. So when you start a mission, you pick a couple cards in the beginning. You can't upgrade them because you can never bring in toilet paper, which I feel like that is not the right move. I feel like you should be able to build and continue with your currencies. That way, every level, basically, you can get more and more powerful. The game doesn't do that, and I think that's a big miss. But the other currency is Dark Matter, and this is something that you'll find again throughout the area now this carries over and this is even something you can get from another card provider okay and now this is before a run you can have perks you can have skills and there's 30 of them in all now here's what i'll say going through the game at just a normal casual pace i unlocked 10 10 of those 30 now, the thing is, though, they just make you more powerful. They'll make sprinting easier. They'll make you have more health. They'll make you have more damage. So it's, again, like, I don't even know if it's roguelike because you're just, cons I mean, maybe it is, because you're consistently getting better. So what, what I guess I'm saying is if you played this game over and over and over and you got as much dark matter as possible, right, your final run You'll be going in with 30 perks activated versus your first run where you have zero. And, and that's just how the game is. So I don't know if that's the greatest like system to it. You can also only do the Dark Matter perks. You can only buy it before a run. You can't do anything you know, while you're in one, even if you have enough currency to buy one. The final one is actually like coins, and coins will buy cosmetics. Now... The game has a ton of cosmetics. There, I mean, the base set is free. Then there's the set that you can buy with the in-game stuff. Once you beat the game, you unlock a new mode, which you can go through, and it has additional cosmetics. It has additional rewards. So there is some reason to go through it again. As I said, there's difficulties, easy, medium, and hard, or normal, I think, is technically medium. I went through normal. I think it was actually quite a challenge playing with bots. They're smart. They'll heal you or revive you. You, I should say they don't actually heal you they, they'll pick you up if you're down okay and they're generally good fighters I can see human beings being better than them but they're actually quite decent and for my understanding because I tried playing it in different you know difficulties the difficulties are basically how much damage you give out and how much damage you take it's not less enemies it's not that the enemy starts with less or more cards it's mainly just damage from what I saw okay so I mean I kind of explained it there and I you know I went through a couple couple positives and negatives my biggest issues let's just go over a couple of them in a row it's just I mean number one it's very short now we talked about like length versus dollars four and a half hours and I mean it, it was an okay game so it's four and a half hours of okay quality it would be different I think if it was four and a half hours of terrible quality but also four and a half hours of amazing quality it's not that so you can you do with that what you want but that's just my opinion on it the story is solid. Um, I never really laughed all them. There's a couple times I chuckled, okay? And I do think it's got the charm of South Park. It looks really nice. I, I like visually how it looks. I've always been uh, fine with them going, you know, 3D in this way. I think, you know, there's kind of two different kinds of cutscenes throughout this game. I like them both. I think it visually looks really good. The audio is very good. 
the audio is very good except for the children that you're slaughtering in each mission. Now, I believe the background story is they actually got young kids to do the audio, and that's fine, and I, you know, I, I guess it is what it is. There's two things with it. Number one, it's not very good. But yet again, I'm, I mean, they're supposed to be kindergartners, I believe, in the game. And, and maybe they are in real life. So it's whatever. But number two, they repeat so often. So I actually played it with the sound pretty much off. And I would just like listen to things on my phone because the same death animations, hit animations, the kids kind of whining when you strike them. It's very annoying. It's very bad. And it happens nonstop. And it doesn't change up. There's like five or six different. Uh, kind of uh, vocal kind of cues so that I don't know what they were thinking there but there's just not enough uh, I guess like I said variation to it then okay most of this game rests upon the gameplay right you're doing runs the game kind of expects you to do it more than one time especially to get that dark matter to to get stronger and replay these missions right different difficulties all that jazz the combat's fine um, again I saw some of the reviews where it's like the combat's the worst thing on planet earth I don't think it's the worst thing. I think some things are better than others. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, some weapons just felt like they were easier to use and, like, the game almost kind of wanted you to use them versus other ones. Like, here's here's what I think is kind of messed up about it. As you beat the levels, you unlock the weapons and the powers. And, like I said, the powers, I can actually see you mixing and matching and, say, using a power, you get the first level. And you say, you know what? This is just a really good power. I don't care how many more powers they give me. I'm going to use that one. Versus the weapons where I feel like they kind of do get better. So the weapon you use in level one and then you unlock the next one. It's almost as if the game wants you to choose that next one, but you don't have to because technically they're all supposed to be even. I don't really get that. I think the ranged weapons maybe, but not really the hand-to-hand -hand ones. And I actually did find, I think, the wand, which is the, the best or the third one that you unlock for ranged. I actually think the wand is the best one. Okay, so then the combat itself. The one thing I think this game needed, and I don't know why in God's name it doesn't have it, is a lock-on system. I was trying. I thought I missed it in, in like the you know visuals of like, okay, did it give me a tutorial on it? There's no lock-on, and for me, the camera just wasn't really working. And your character will like lunge as like a finishing move, right? Depending, I guess, on the weapon, right? Some weapons are different. But you'll outright, like, jump, you know, like, next to an... You'll probably see this, you know, as I'm talking, my, my B-roll footage. You miss often because the game doesn't lock on. And there's a lot of enemies around you. So, I don't know. Like, I didn't hate the combat. Um, again, once I found my preferred weapons, I actually thought it was fine. Specifically the wand. Like I said, the wand, I would say, had legitimate fun. I had fun with it. The other ones, would I say it was fun? Not necessarily. The one part of each level that I did have fun with, the bosses. The bosses are really good, I believe. For what this game is, right, this kind of almost hack and slash, right, third person thing, I actually think the the bosses are very, very good. They're diverse, you know, they're different. Uh, the structure of, you know, what they're doing is different. I think those were a lot of fun, and, and those I actually didn't try on different difficulties, so that might be pretty fun to play with other people, okay? So bosses, I would say, is a huge highlight. The other stuff is, again, I really wouldn't say terrible, and, you know, you could say, well, Alex, you got a review copy. Uh, you know, as I say in, like, all my videos, I am pretty honest when it comes to games I play. It doesn't matter if they gave it to me or not I think this is a fine game now again I don't I don't give scores but I'd say top to bottom it felt like it was trying to reach some, right like even the card system which I thought was like okay I get it but there's not enough variety of the cards there's not enough almost depth to the the roguelike part to it right the hack and slash part it's fine. I think some weapons are better than others, and I think that's kind of a structural problem. So everything that's in this game, I do think kind of has an issue where they didn't go all the way with it. I don't think it's a terrible game. Okay, now let me say this, though, and this might make people kind of mad. We've always talked about, and I've actually always said, I'm fine them going in this direction versus what they did with, you know, Stick of Truth and Fractured Butthole. Those two games are epic. They are amazing. I love those two games, okay? So leading into Snow Day, I saw a disappointment, but I always said, you know what? I'm going to give them a try. 
So I will controversially say those two games are much better. They're different games. They're absolutely different. And this game you can play with friends. Those games you can't. But I think the quality, the storytelling, the characters, the combat, the mechanics, I think they are night and day. They are so much better. with those. So my own personal opinion, did they make the right decision going down this path? What, however they made the decision, whoever made the decision, was this the right move? No. No, it was not. It's a fine game. $30 for it. Yes, it's four and a half hours. You can play it multiple times. Now, actually, one final thing to throw in. So they had, I believe, like kind of time slots where you could play it online with other people. They actually gave me the code after that. So I played with bots. You know, I mentioned bots a few times. They're fine. They're fine. And I think it made for a fine experience. If I played with other humans, would it have been better? I do think it would have been better, but the actual features that I've tried to explain to you guys in this and the reason why I wanted to explain right in this video, that's the stuff that can't really be helped, whether it's bots or humans, right? I think there's a fun factor where it might be more fun to just run around with your friends and beat up these enemies but it is repetitive, and the weapon thing gets in the way, and the card mechanics get in the way, and the repetition gets in the way. So yeah, a lot of it, I mean, as a blanket statement, right? Like some of these things are just flat out better with friends. They're more enjoyable. You can look past them better. But those flaws, I think, are st it, it, it's still there, right? Like whether it's friends or bots, they're still there. So again, you make of uh, my review what you want. I think it was a fine experience. I was disappointed. I mean, I, I would absolutely say that because I thought it was thought it was going to be longer. I thought the story itself is fine. The story itself is actually quite like it makes sense. It follows a flow to it. But I thought I would laugh more. I thought I would just you know enjoy it more altogether. Um, there's parts. There's absolutely parts that I enjoyed, and I think again it was. Was fine I just thought there'd be more to it and then the combat yeah the combat was I think just a lot more bare bones than I thought it was going to be and within two or three levels you haven't necessarily seen it all but in terms of how the game functions you've experienced it all and the fighting is going to be the same no matter what and you know so on so on so that's the kind of stuff that I think gets in this game's way so let me know what you guys think in the comments make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel bell icon turned on I hope to see you all on the next one